This is the complete beginner's guide to YouTube live streaming. We're gonna step through exactly how to live stream on YouTube in the easiest ways possible and build up to some more advanced live streaming software apps and tools that you can easily incorporate to boost your results fast. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. So this is the complete beginner's guide to YouTube live streaming. So we're gonna start with the most basic options first and show you how you can easily get set up and get going live. From there, I'll start to introduce some more advanced steps that you can easily implement to boost your quality, including some simple software, some simple apps, and even how you can get branded animations like this one, done up in just a few minutes and incorporate cool elements like this into your live streaming so that you get super polished results. So first up, no matter what you're using, you will need to make sure that your channel is set up for live streaming. So you need to make sure that your YouTube channel is verified and that you do have live streaming enabled. You can do this really quickly or you can check that this is enabled for you by heading to youtube.com forward slash verify. If you're already verified, it's going to say your channel is already verified. If it's not verified yet, then just follow those simple steps on screen to get your account verified. And then you'll just wanna make sure that you've got live streaming enabled for your channel. Now that that's done, we can go and look at the easiest way to go live. And this is a basic way for you to go live just with your web browser on your desktop computer. And literally this is done on the YouTube webpage itself, just using your webcam and your microphone. So for this, all you need to do is head to youtube.com, come up and hit this create a video and more button and come down to go live. Now when this page loads on the left here, you wanna pick webcam. I'm going to give your stream a title. We'll just go test stream. In our case here, we'll make this test stream uh, private, but you could also make it unlisted or public. Now, if you do want to schedule this stream for later, then you can check the box here and enter the date and times for your live stream. We'll turn that off now because we're going to go live now. And you will need to answer this question here around, is this video made for kids to comply with the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act or COPPA? So is this made for kids? No, it is not made for kids. And we'll just go next. It's gonna quickly take a thumbnail, pose, do something silly. Okay, we've got a thumbnail. Now, if you do wanna upload your own custom thumbnail, you move your mouse over here and you can choose upload custom thumbnail or you wanna retake your image. Just click on that and take another one. Now to grab a copy of the link for you to share out to people, to let them know that you are going live. If you wanna post it on other platforms, you can hit share. And then this is your link here to send out to people and to let them know that you are going live. So you can actually do this right now before you do go live. Jump on Facebook, wherever else you wanna post it, share that link out. Uh, but then when you wanna go live, all you have to do is hit go live and we are counting down. We're live. Okay, so then on the side here is where you have your chat to interact with everyone. So yeah, super basic, but we're live and we're on YouTube. This is the easiest way to go live on YouTube. To end the stream, all you have to do is click down the bottom here on end stream. Are you sure you wanna end your stream? End, and we are done. So the advantages of going live this way is that it's fast, it's easy, and that there's no additional software required. So as for the disadvantages or the downsides then, there really is no control that you're getting over things like screen sharing or adding titles into your stream or playing videos or changing cameras or bringing in additional guests or other people to join you while you're live. But going live to YouTube this way is the most basic and the easiest way to go live from your desktop. Now the process to go live from your mobile is very similar. All you need to do is to open up the YouTube app. We hit that little create video button at the top again and come down to live. Now while you're getting this set up, you can keep it in portrait. You will wanna rotate it to landscape before you go live, but you can give your video a title, test stream. We can choose if it's unlisted or public. Let's go unlisted. We can add our location in there if we want to. Once again, we'll need to mark if this video is made for kids or not. No, it's not made for kids. And you need to answer this question. Do you want to restrict your video to an adult audience? No, we don't restrict. Then we can just go next or make us pose or a smile for a thumbnail. And then all we need to do to start the stream is just hit go live. Now, if you do wanna go live from your smartphone, then YouTube does have some restrictions in place that you need to meet their requirements for first. 
So they say to be able to live stream on your mobile, your channel will need to have at least 1,000 subscribers. Now that is if you're going to be using the YouTube app. Now if you do want to live stream to YouTube from your mobile device and you don't have 1,000 subscribers yet, you can still do it, you just can't use the YouTube app. You can use another app like Prism Live Studio, which will let you get around that and broadcast to YouTube on their app. Okay, so now let's ramp things up a little bit more and get a little bit more advanced. This is the result that we are going to build out to now. Now there's a few simple tips and a few tools that we're going to incorporate to help you get there, but don't stress, you don't need to do all of them. Each one of these alone will take your results up a notch so that you can start small and you can eventually build out and incorporate more of these things over time. So the first thing you can do to take your live streams up a notch and to get some of these more advanced things happening is to grab some live streaming software or to use a live streaming platform. Now we're not gonna run through all the different live streaming options you've got out there. We've already got dedicated videos on our channel for that. I will link them up in the cards and below in the description if you're trying to work out which one is going to be the best one for you. But really what we're talking about here is using software like OBS or Ecamm Live or BeLive or StreamYard or Wirecast or vMix. All of these solutions are really gonna let you level up and create much more professional looking live streams. Giving you support for things like multiple cameras, adding titles and videos on screen, using green screen, the ability to bring people in for an interview, or even to share your PowerPoint presentation or your keynote presentation, and much, much more. Now, so I'm not leaving you high and dry or confused at this point, my immediate recommendations for most people right now, if you're on a Mac, goes to Ecamm Live, or there's also StreamYard, which will work on both Mac or PC. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either one of those two. My personal preference and what I use is Ecamm Live on Mac. And again, links to all of this stuff you can find in the description box below. But once you've got your live stream software picked, you can schedule up your live stream by again coming back to YouTube, coming down to go live. Now instead of coming over to webcam, we're gonna leave it up here on stream. And this is where we can fill in the information to schedule up our live stream, which then those platforms or the software that you're going to use can access this and stream directly to it. Or what you'll also find is that a lot of the live streaming platforms, or a lot of the live streaming software will actually let you schedule up your live stream directly from within the application. So for this example, I'm on Ecamm Live here now because we've got the destination of our live stream going to YouTube, our broadcast, Let's go private. And then from here, we can either choose to go live now, unscheduled, or to schedule it up. We can see ones here that are already been scheduled, or we can come down here to new scheduled live stream, and we can fill in this information again to schedule up your stream. So as for some of those more advanced controls and better looking live streams, you can see we can just drag and drop an image in here. I can pinch to zoom, make it bigger or smaller. I can come up here and switch to a screen share. Get rid of that guy. So you're able to see my computer screen. I can pinch to zoom and move things around if I wanna do a tutorial or something on here. And again, all of this can be happening and be changed and tweaked while you're actually live. So you can see you get so much more control and so much more creativity that you can bring into your live streams just using software like this. So once you've got that up and running, the next thing you can do is to start to look at some cool animations or some lower thirds or some titles and things that you can use and you can incorporate in your live streams to add that next level of professionalism. Now I personally used to sit there and create this stuff from scratch. It took a ton of time. And then I found a service called Video Hive where you can purchase a lot of these templates and things, which made the process much, much easier. But I found an even cooler option and it is called Place It. Now this is an awesome service and this is what we use to make a simple animation like this in just a few minutes. So obviously looking back at the time that I used to spend making all of this stuff manually and even then purchasing the templates and those sorts of things and customizing them up from there, Place it, being able to create something that looks like this in just a matter of minutes is just insane. Now, if you wanna find out more about Place it and see all the awesome stuff that you can easily create in there, then we have a link down in the description below, which does give you some sort of a discount right now at the time of filming this video. Now, this is not a sponsored video. We are an affiliate for them, but we just love the platform and we really just wanted to jump at the chance to support them because this is what we use and I just can't believe how easy and simple they make this stuff. So we've looked at the software, we've looked at the animations. Now we're gonna look at some of the gear that's gonna help you with your live streaming. One of my favorite pieces of gear for live streaming is called the Elgato Stream Deck. This makes it so easy to control your live streaming software and easily switch between different camera angles or your screen share literally with the press of a button. So what this is, is essentially a heap of extra buttons that you can program up to run and to manage your live stream. 
Now the Stream Deck does support a heap of different live streaming programs and live streaming software, but if the one that you wanna use isn't specifically listed, it's likely that you'll still be able to use it just manually programming these keys to trigger keyboard shortcuts to do the things that you're looking to do. Now, if you're someone who is looking for a really professional looking live stream, then you could consider using a more professional camera instead of a webcam to actually run the live stream. So this is where you could hook up your DSLR, your mirrorless, your video camera, your point and shoot camera, to hook that up to run the live stream instead of just using your webcam. But to do that, in most cases, you will need what's called an HDMI interface unit. This will essentially let you take the HDMI feed or the video feed out of your camera and plug it into your computer so that it essentially picks it up as a webcam. And from there, you can use that in your live streaming software. Now, the one that I use currently and the one that I recommend is the Elgato CamLink 4K. This thing is absolutely amazing. And if you are looking to plug your camera into your computer, this is the piece of gear that I would recommend. Now, just while we're on this, there are some cameras out there that will let you hook them up directly to your computer to use them as a webcam or for live streaming without the need for things like the Elgato CamLink 4K. They'll just work straight out of the box. So it is worth doing a quick Google search to see if your specific camera can be connected with USB for video use because there seems to be more and more cameras that are supporting this right now. But if your camera doesn't support just using USB, then that's where you'll need something like this CamLink 4K. So now that you know how all that stuff works, I've got a couple of really quick pro tips for you for live streaming. The first one is to always run a speed test before you actually go live. Having a solid internet connection is probably the most important thing when it comes to live streaming so that you can actually push out a good quality live streaming feed without dropouts and issues for your viewers watching. So to run a test, you wanna head over to the website speedtest.net and run the test on the website there. Now it's gonna go in two parts. The first is gonna test your download speed and then the second part of the test is where it tests your upload speed and that's what we're looking at here because you're going to be uploading your video and audio or your live stream to your live streaming platform, YouTube, Facebook or wherever you're sending it out. You wanna make sure that it is your upload speed that is good and is consistent and not jumping all over the place. So I would say here, at an absolute minimum and I do mean minimum, your upload speed needs to be a solid or a consistent 2.5 to 3 megabits per second at an absolute minimum, but ideally you're looking 5 to 10 megabits per second just to be safe. And obviously if it's higher than this, then perfect, but if it is lower than the absolute minimum, 2.5 megabits per second or 3 megabits per second at a minimum, then I would be looking for an alternative to go live. Maybe looking at hotspotting from your phone or, or just trying to use a different internet connection so that you don't have any issues while you're live. So the second pro tip I've got for you is after your live stream has finished, you can actually jump into your YouTube analytics for that live stream and you can see how many viewers you had. You can see if you had any technical issues or errors with your live stream and with your internet connection. You can see how many comments you had, how many people stuck around and how long they stuck around and watched your live stream for. So it's really interesting to dive into the analytics after your live stream is finished to get some insight into how your live stream went and how your viewers liked it and how long they stuck around. And the third pro tip that I've got for you is that you can actually edit down your live streams once they're finished. So you don't need to download your video, make any edits to it, remove any sections you don't want, and upload it as a new piece of content. You can actually just edit down and remove pieces from your live stream while that video is live on YouTube. So say for example, you're running some sort of live training, you could trim off the start of your live stream where you might be greeting everyone and welcoming them onto the training and maybe you'll cut off the Q&A at the end or if there's a section that goes wrong in the middle that you wanna remove, then you have that ability using the YouTube video editor once your live stream is finished. So to access that, all you need to do is to bring up your live stream and come down to edit video. And then on the left hand side here, you get access to the YouTube editor. Now we've done a full walkthrough video on that YouTube video editor. So if you wanna find out more about it, then there will be a link in the description box below. But it's a pretty cool feature to be able to trim down your live streams without the need to create a whole new video and re-upload it to the platform. So that's how easy it is to go live on YouTube, whether you're looking for the simplest and easiest way, or whether you're looking to grow into something more professional and more advanced we've got you covered. Now, if you wanna find out more about live streaming platforms and live streaming software options, whether you're on Mac or PC, check out the videos that are linked on the screen now, and I'll see you soon.